Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is James Cicito, and thank you for taking the time to watch my presentation. Before I showcase the single page application that I created, please allow me to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a military veteran with 21 years of active duty service, and I retired from the Air Force in September of 2021. Soon after my retirement from the service, I became a mortgage loan originator. However, due to the current state and direction of the mortgage industry, I again find myself looking for a career change. Through research, I've learned that coding is one of the most in-demand skills in today's job market. And with that information, coupled with my fascination with technology and a passion for learning is what led me to Savvy Coders in the start of my journey of learning how to code. For my capstone project as a dog owner myself, I chose to create an app that would assist dog owners in finding dog-friendly establishments in any specified location. So to build this app, I used a number of different technologies and tools, including HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Express, Axios, Mongoose, Navigo, and external APIs such as Yelp, among others. To start, I created a user flowchart, and let me show you that now. Share my screen real quick. Here we are. So this flowchart was to help me map out the user's journey as they interacted with the application and also to help me identify any potential roadblocks in areas that may need improvement. So my initial plan was to have my homepage. And then from the homepage, I wanted the user to be able to navigate to the restaurants page, parks page, services, and hotel page, and also to be able to navigate to the about page of the application and the contact us page as well. Um, next, I created the wireframes for a visual representation of the application's layout and also functionality. So on the home page, how I wanted it to look was I wanted to have the logo on top, the navigation bar right below that, I wanted it to have a background page and then a text field so that the user can input their search parameters such as the category and the location of the area they're uh, looking to find. And then once they input that information, I wanted the application to then navigate them to the corresponding page, whether they're looking for a restaurant, uh, looking for a pet store or a park. So, and then in those pages, I wanted it to have the logo at the top again. I um, also wanted it to have the navigation bar so they can go back and forth amongst the pages. And then I wanted it to render out or list out the results um, of their search parameters, uh, pulling it from the, from the Yelp API. And um, the results, I wanted it to have a photo and some pertinent information such as the address of the location and also a phone number if it has one. So again, same goes for the other pages. And then for the contact us page, what I wanted was for the page to have a logo and a little form, a form field here in the middle so that users are able to reach out and provide feedback about the application um, whether it's just, uh, hey, thank you for creating the webpage, or if they have any other questions or any other inquiries about the page. And then also wanted to create a, an About Us page just to tell about a little bit about the application itself. Now, before I move on and show you the application, I wanted to highlight the methodology and process that helped me in achieving a minimum viable product uh, for my capstone, and that was Agile. And with the Agile process and using the Jira software, I was able to approach my capstone development in incremental and iterative periods called sprints. Each sprint allowed me to identify and focus on achievable goals. Uh, and throughout the boot camp, we also conducted Agile ceremonies in which I served as a scrum master. And with this role, I was able to facilitate our daily standups, our sprint reviews, uh, including backlog reviews, and also sprint planning. And now moving on to my application. And as we go through the different pages, 
I'll explain some of the features of the app and how they work. So starting off here on the home page, the user can go ahead and input the category that they'd like, whether it's parks, restaurants, or services. Um, originally, I did wanted to have hotels on here as well, but due to time constraint, I was unable to do so. And anyhow, if the user wanted to look up parks in a specific location, whether they live there or they're visiting that area, and just input it and then click submit. This will then route them to the appropriate page and then render out the information that they requested. And then as you can see here, it lists out the different parks or in the San Diego city area and it has the name of the park, the address of the park, and if phone number is available, it is right there. And then from here, they can search another city if they like, let's just say Las Vegas. Here you are, it, the, the application renders out a list of the different parks in Las Vegas, or they can just go to a different search category that they like. So as you saw there, let me talk about one of the functions that I enjoyed learning about in our boot camp, and that was the if else function. So the way it works is that um, the page will render out one thing that's available, and if that's not available, then it will be the other. So here, as you can see, there is a background image, right? And then if I was to put a search parameter and click submit, that background image has now disappeared and it only shows us the list of establishments that we wanted we were looking for so in my code that particular code is right here right and if the there was if the there's no search parameter provided then the page will display the no park results, right? And then the way I added um, a background image for that is through the style CSS, and that is right here. So the no park results background image is that. So with the code, um, pretty much telling the web page to, hey, if there are no search results, just provide the background image. If there is a search result else, then display the, the table of results. So, and I did that for each one of the categories. So here in restaurants, there's a search parameter results. And if you refresh it and there isn't one, then picture, a uh, background image will be provided or will be shown. And same goes for the parks. Okay, parks in Vegas, you are. And same goes for the search. So now for the contact page, um, this is a form and this is linked to form spree, right? Uh, so what happens is that the user can input the required fields and then put in their put in their comment, put submit, and that will be sent to forms from. So if I go to forms free, refresh this. Now I have four and there it is. It's telling me that somebody liked my page. Um, that is it. Um, now, if the user did not put in contact information, this will not allow it to submit its uh, inquiry or comment. Um, the way that works is that here in my code, all I needed to do was um, there's a form, it is a method of post, which posted on forms free. Um, and then the they would have to put in a name, which is what makes that happen is this word right here required. So I'm um, pretty much telling the application that 
for somebody to submit a comment, I want, I want to require a name and I want to require an email. So um, throughout this application, I, I used the framework Express. Uh, this was to create the back end of the app. It provided a way for me to handle the web requests and responses. I used, I used it to create a number of routes for the app and um, to use Axios to make the request to the Yelp API and return the list of businesses on the user search parameters. I also used Navigo and that was uh, used to handle the routing of the app on the front end, which is this right here. So Navigo is what's allowing you to go through the different pages. Um, and pretty much provide functionality for the handling before and after hooks of each route. So again, and finally, again, I use the Axios um, process so that to make the request to the Yelp API and receive the response data from Yelp. Throughout this development of the application, I did come across a few roadblocks and uh, it forced me to apply some problem solving skills. A few of the roadblocks that I was able to resolve on my own through research and use of available resources online, such as Google, YouTube, and MDM web docs. However, there were some roadblocks that I wasn't able to resolve on my own, and I had to rely on the rely on and request the assistance of the staff. And I did that via the our Jira ticketing system or through messaging them through Slack chat. For future iterations of my application, I'd like to add more functionality to it and um, add uh, use other APIs such as Google Maps, MapQuest, so that I can provide directions and um, the distance for each establishment or place. Uh, overall, this has been a fun and very challenging project to work on. I learned a lot about the different web technologies and tools along the way. And I hope that you enjoyed this overview of my app and uh, thank you for stopping by.